Good morning. A couple of announcements today. To, uh, after worship, you are all invited to hang around for our congregational meeting. And uh, we look forward to that. And you may have noticed when you walked in, the ECH totes are back there. Uh, you may have, there are also some hams there. And I need to remind you that um, there's just one ham per tote. Just one ham per tote. So we'll have enough to go around. Uh, but we have the lists back there as well. So be sure and pick those up if you'd like to contribute to the ECH uh, Christmas uh, totes. And we do have flowers today on the altar. They were just brought in. These are really nice flowers from uh, uh, Paula and George for uh, Paula's mother, Marilyn J. Schmidt. So we thank you for that. Lovely flowers. And um, let's see. Next Sunday, we will begin our stewardship season campaign, and the, we will have a member come and do a, a little stewardship talk for worship for the next three weeks, and then on the fourth week, that will be Stewardship Sunday. So we have that to look forward to as well. Uh, those are all the, the announcements that I wanted to highlight this morning, uh, but I do want to say I'm glad you're here with us, and um, again, be sure and uh, stay with us after the postlude this morning for our congregational meeting. With that, we will begin with our worship. Please join with me in our call to worship. We may come here for a glimpse of glory. The cup of Jesus' own life, struggle and joy, suffering and hope, fullness of life. We may come here to get close to Jesus. Baptized into the reign of God, where the Spirit breaks down barriers among all people and creates new relationships. We may come here for honor or fame. Why are we here?
please join with me now in our prayer of invocation. Holy dwelling place, your tent is wide enough to provide shelter for all who seek you, food for all who hunger, and healing for all who suffer. Meet us here today and fill us with confidence in your presence that we may risk sharing Jesus' cup and his baptism so the world may become the place of love and justice you desire for all. Shelter us with your light and clothe us with your heavenly garments. Teach us how we may best serve ourselves and one another on this daring adventure. Our reading this morning is from Luke chapter 10. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But one, wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on him. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him. And when I come back, I will repay you whatever, you more, whatever more you spend. Which of these three, do you think, was a neighbor to the man who fell in the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Please join with me now in our prayer of confession. Divine Shepherd, like sheep, we go our own ways, with our heads to the ground and our attention turned elsewhere. We often fail to heed the gentle nudge of your staff and your calls for home. With so many things to distract us, work, school, and the general busyness of life, we lie unresponsive to your calls to serve. Protector Jesus, you came among us to shelter us from the cold of night and forests of danger. In your presence, we are in green pasture. In you, we are forgiven and called once again to serve and create with you a world of justice and peace for all.
Should we offer treatment for COVID-19 to those who refuse to get vaccinated? To heal or not to heal? That is the question. And you may think that's a silly question, but believe it or not, this is an ethical question that people have been grappling about since the vaccines first became available. From hospitals and public health institutions considering medical rationing and triage, to a doctor in South Miami who will not allow unvaccinated people to come to her office, to a doctor in Alabama who decided to no, no longer treat unvaccinated patients, to a Colorado-based health system that denies organ transplants to the unvaccinated, to insurance companies who want to charge higher premiums for the unvaccinated, to the Australian government, which will not provide welfare benefits to parents who do not vaccinate their children, the issue of providing health care for the, act, the, the unvaccinated is fiercely debated. And the reason, as you know, this is even an issue is because our health care system has been overwhelmed. It is stretched to the limit. This has, as many people say, become a pandemic of the unvaxxed. So vaccinated people are often frustrated and even angry at those who refuse to get the shot. So what do we do about this? We're at this impasse. What do we do? I believe the parable of the Good Samaritan offers us some guidance on this issue. I'm doing something today that I've never done, believe it or not, in almost 32 years of preaching. Never done this before. I am going off lectionary. It's sort of like going off-road, right, <laughs> in your four-wheeler. I have always followed the lectionary, always, which is, as you know, a three-year cycle of readings that most denominations rely upon uh, to keep us all on the same page, literally on the same page every Sunday. What inspired me to go off lectionary today was a recent uh, rereading of the parable of the Good Samaritan and the insight it gave me in my understanding of the dilemma that I'm talking about this morning. So here's what happened. Uh, last Saturday, the board of directors for uh, Deaconess Parish Nurse Ministries met for an all-day strategic planning event. Now, I am a new member of the board and so a few days before that meeting, I received a phone call from Reverend Donna Popillo. Many of you know Donna. She is the executive director of Deaconess Parish Nurse Ministries. And she asked if I would give a brief talk about, the, um, about healing in the Christian tradition. Someone else is giving a talk about healing in the Muslim tradition. And she wanted me to do that. I said I would, so I began to think about the healing stories in Scripture, which are many, of course. Now, most of them are, seem to be stories about Jesus or the apostles performing miraculous healings, stories where the lame walk, the blind see, the deaf hear, the lepers are cleansed, and these are all fantastic inspirational stories but I don't believe we relate to them very well. I don't know about you, but my attempts at miraculous healings have failed to land me a gig as a slick-haired televangelist. It just hasn't happened yet. I simply do not have the gift to pray away the pain, to help others cast away their crutches, or to cancel out the cancer in someone else's body. I wish I could but I can't. I can't do that. I begin to realize, however, that from a Christian perspective, healing is not about performing miracles. That's the route taken by con artists and charlatans. 
Instead, in the Christian tradition, healing is like the service provided by the unnamed person, character, in Jesus' parable of the, what we call the Good Samaritan. Healing is more mundane than miraculous, more gory than glamorous, as it was for the Samaritan in this story. So reading this story again, I soon realized that it has something very specific to say to us about this question of caring for the unvaccinated amid a pandemic, to heal or not to heal. And I believe the answer is to heal, which means, if I'm honest with myself, I had a little slight change of heart. Because like many people, I was inclined to think, well, choices have consequences. I was leaning toward the old saying, you've made your bed, now lie in it, which sadly often means a bed in the ICU. Now, you know the story of the Good Samaritan. Jesus is responding to a couple of questions from a lawyer, one of which is, well, who is my neighbor? And Jesus answers that question question in the conclusion of the parable of the Good Samaritan by saying that a neighbor is the one who shows mercy, which is a much better answer than, well, my neighbor is the one who lives next door to me. <laughs> but mercy is an interesting word. It's defined as compassion or forgiveness shown toward someone whom it is within one's power to punish or harm. But this is interesting because, to me, the parable does not give us any indication that the man who had been beaten up and left for dead on the side of the road by these robbers deserved to be punished or harmed like he was. No indication of that whatsoever. And yet, isn't that what the priest and the Levite do? By passing by on the other side of the road to avoid this half-dead man, they are essentially punishing him for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. They choose not to show mercy to this man. Now, the reasons why the priest and the Levite do not go out of their way to help this man are, are obvious. They are religious men who are trying their best to adhere to the law of Moses. And what does the law of Moses say? Don't touch blood. Don't touch a corpse. Because if you do, you will be unclean. Well, a priest and a Levite, a Levite is simply a priest that works in the temple. They couldn't go to work that day if they were unclean. Their jobs depended upon being clean. If they touch this man, they will have to quarantine for a while. So they decide, nah, Let's socially distance ourselves from that man lying half, half dead on the side of the road. The Samaritan, by contrast, did not worry about touching blood or a possible corpse and being declared unclean, although he knew that was, that was the consequences of doing so. And like the priest and the Levite, I'm sure that he would have loved to have kept his distance from that man rather than, than offering a helping hand. Instead, he risks exposure. He risks his own personal safety, knowing that the robbers who beat this man could still be as close by as a deadly virus. Now, I'm reading this story, and as I reflected on the applicability of this story to our situation today, my mind almost exploded, I have to say. Because this parable speaks to us today in a, in a, in a life-affirming way about how we should treat people, all people, vaccinated or unvaccinated, clean or unclean, whatever labels you want to use to refer to them. I'm constantly amazed at how often stories from script, Scripture uh, speak to us in our setting Thousands of years later, they have something to say to us. And the story of the Good Samaritan is no exception. It teaches us that health care is sometimes a selfless act 
requiring an act of courage. The practice of health care should have no borders, no boundaries, as the organization called Doctors Without Borders tells us, reminds us. And certainly there are, much of the time it seems in this contemporary dilemma, there are political, philosophical, even physical lines drawn between the vaccinated and the unvaccinated. But the parable of the Good Samaritan tells us that the only choice we have is to treat everyone for everything, even if we are angry and frustrated at them. Healthcare is a right, not a privilege for the well-behaved. It's a right, not a privilege for the well-behaved. I think the answer to the question to heal or not to heal is very clear. However, um, I want to just spend a couple of minutes adding a few more very brief points to the argument that I'm trying to make that we should uh, treat even those who are resistant to the vaccination for whatever reason. There are many. Uh, I want to make four quick points. The first point is this. We must recognize that many of the unvaccinated who get COVID and survive often have a change of heart, and they become passionate about encouraging family members and friends to get the vaccine. I heard a story just yesterday about this very thing. There was an unvaccinated person who had to spend a lot of time in the ICU and, and was able to survive, but took pictures while she was there, selfies, so to speak. And she was therefore able to convince family members to get the vaccine. So the point is, treating the unvaccinated can save not only that life, but other lives as well. Second, denying any citizen access to treatment for whatever reason is grossly inconsistent with the values of our modern healthcare system. We cannot promote the idea of universal health care out of one side of our mouths and deny treatment to those we do deem not worthy out of the other side of our mouth. We must be consistent and non-discriminatory. Third, it is obvious, isn't it, that the primary motives for wanting to deny treatment to the unvaccinated are frustration, anger, and retribution. And when we make ethical decisions based on our emotional reactions to people, we will fall short of the Christian vision of healing and health care. And then finally, we need to admit, really, that many people are, who are vaccine hesitant or resistant are victims of a sustained misinformation campaign what they read, the news they watch, the podcasts they download, the people they trust, are misleading them. So we should, hold, we should hold people responsible for their own views, but it is important to acknowledge that they are being intentionally manipulated. So the parable of the Good Samaritan teaches us that even if one walks on the wrong side of the road, i.e. refuses to get vaccinated, they still deserve to receive treatment. It teaches us that those who, like the Samaritan, are willing to risk their own health to treat others deserve more credit than those who are too self-righteous and busy to serve others. So, to heal or not to heal? Most of us are not healthcare providers. So maybe the larger question for all of us is this, to serve or not to serve? And I think from Jesus' perspective, the answer is very clear. Amen. Please pray with me. Oh, Holy One, we... We bow our heads today, ever aware of our deep thirst for understanding, especially understanding of your ways. 
We often present our questions as if there's going to be some clear answer to the deepest and most difficult issues we face. We want to have answers to the, the, to the problems of right and wrong, good and evil. We look upon things and we question, why does this happen? We struggle to sort of rid life of its ambiguity. We want black and white. We don't want gray. We struggle to comprehend. We, we ask that you would be with us in this turmoil that, that is swirling around us as we seek to do what is right, what is good in this struggle against this, this virus. So cause us in life's storms to pause, to be still, and to know you. Cause us to live more easily with the the questions, the ambiguities of life, and to realize that many of life's happenings do not yield easy answers or easy understanding. Cause us to bow in awe when we experience the unbridled power of nature, but also the progress of science and the wisdom of many people so cause us to bow in awe before you as well, you who laid out the heavens and the earth. We pray for this world. We have not learned how to resolve, resolve all of our differences, and we project the, the worst of motives and onto our enemies and, and claim the best motives for our own. We continue to demonize our enemies justify allowing them to suffer or even to be killed or kill them. We speak of others as evil, and at the same time, we deny the evil that resides within us. So deliver us, O God. Save us from refusing to learn. Help us to revise our lives and our culture so that we can gain a heart of wisdom and know that you are the beginning of wisdom. Bring us greater hope in, in our, to our future, greater belief in the, in the human family and less distrust of others. Bring us a better world where love and peace break forth like the springtime. We commend to you all who suffer, who suffer from illness, suffer from grief and loss, people who are facing unwanted transitions in their lives, people who are facing challenging decisions, be to them and to us a comforting hope. We pray this in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Jesus came not to be served, but to serve. Let us follow this example and share our gifts so that we may also experience the joys and challenges of serving. Let us stand for the doxology. pray with me. Parent God, may this offering assist us in continuing Christ's work in the world to heal the grief, transgressions, and illnesses that oppress and harm your creation. Amen. Our lives are filled with struggles and suffering. None of us are immune. The key to full life in Christ is not to rise above it, but to struggle together and help one another along the way, knowing that God is with us in every moment. This is service. If we seek to serve and lift one another up, committing to struggle together, together we will witness Christ's glory. So be it. Amen. Maybe see.